I got digital dash, can't ride with a art. I walk in the store and I buy the stock. I hide in the bins and pull off the lot. Got to find the diamond, it cost me a lot. They flying like birds, but drop on this hot. 400 degrees, I burn up the block. Burn out, make one call, they turn out. See, see the gang, get the word out. When the shit getting hot, you the first out. Cover my wrist with a watch and I flood it with rocks. Now I look at the time all day. Be high, I ride through your block and I drop off the top and I know you can see my face. You my dog at the end, don't care what the bitch is. Yo, what's it, the YouTube? It's your boy Fish back to be with yet another video today. We were supposed to be starting a new series where I give y'all a rare build every single week, but to start off, this week right i wanted to give y'all something even different i wanted to give y'all a build y'all been asking for for a while and it's not gonna be a rare build it's gonna be actually the best build in all of nba 2k22 next gen now when i just dropped the best guard builds for next gen i found a build when i was trying to make a build a certain way and i found an even better build and i'm gonna be show you guys exactly how to make that with the tutorial in this video now also what i plan on giving you guys is the best finishing bass in the entire game as well so if you guys want more of these next gen builds more of these best badges i need y'all boys right now to like the video subscribe comment down below to help the algorithm all that good stuff out the way but without further ado let's hop straight into it let's go! all right so off the rip so i'm gonna show you guys the tutorial on how to make this because when i showed y'all for the six for three all of my builds y'all be like you can't make this that's because it's not a glitch build but it is but this one is literally a glitch build so let's show you guys so we're gonna go down to the features you're gonna go down to the settings and you're gonna scroll down to the units of measurement and it's going you gotta make sure it's in the metric system now we're gonna go back to my career we can go to the build open slot just go to find you an open spot when it gets to this trying to make a new build just make a new build yeah, we're going to make a rebirth. When it comes to position, we're going to be at the point guard. Hand and number is completely up to you. It does not really matter, but y'all know what I go with every single time. Now, when it comes to the height, you want to get this height as low as possible. But with that being said, you want to lower the weight as much as possible, and you want to lower the wingspan as much as possible. You don't want it to be right under. You want to be right here. Now, body type, that doesn't really matter for this one. Now, when it comes to the attributes, you're just going to get this done as fast as possible so we can get through with this and change it again. Then when you get to the takeovers, you're just going to be pretty much put on the takeovers as fast as possible. Get the build completed. Get the build name. As soon as you get the build name, you're going to see all the stuff, all the shades of. Then you're going to edit the build back all the way back out to the main menu. Go to features right back where you was earlier. Go down to the units of measurement. When you get to the unit of measurement, pretty much all you're going to do now is change it to imperial system. Then you're going to go back to my career. Go back to the open slot that you had. Then you're going to go back to the build that you literally just edited. It's going to probably be a 510, 147, but it's also going to give you the last time you updated that. Yeah, you're going to do a rebirth build. Then you're going to edit that. You don't have to really change anything on the main screen. You're going to change something right here. It's going to give you a little thing to pop up. It's going to say, editing this will reset your attributes. That's okay because we just did that as fast as possible. So, say for instance, if you want to make it at the 511 that I showed you guys, you would do it at the 511. Say, for instance, if you want to make it at the six foot one, which is what we're going to be doing it today, that's what you're going to do. Stop at. If you want to make it six three, you will stop at the six three. That's how you will have to do that six three. I didn't know that I actually, I guess because when you do stuff in the metric system, which is how I made that build, it kind of does get you different heights and weights. And when you keep editing the build and editing the build, and if you make a build off another edit, sometimes in the metric system, it'll turn out to be a glitch build. And that's kind of what happened with that. So, sorry for the miscommunication on that. But I will be giving you guys a tutorial on that 6-3. But for today, we're going to be doing a 6-1. So, for the 6-1, we're going to be lowering the weight down just to be able to make this build as perfect as possible. But, now that I showed you guys how to do it, I don't have to make it like this. I've already had this build made. I don't want to mess it up anyway. So, we're going to back out of this. Now that you know how to get it to the 6 foot 5 Now, we, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I made it. So, we're going to go scroll over here. This is the one that I actually made. It's 6 foot one and 160 so when it comes to this is that the point guard position when it comes to the build you're going to be six foot one 160 on the weight and six foot five on the wingspan this is perfect for me the weight is perfect for me the wingspan is perfect for me i need that 85 perimeter defense i need my ball handle to be that high i need my speed ball to be that high i need my three-pointer i need my driving dunk everything exactly what it is body type is completely up to you that doesn't really matter but if you change if i change it, it's going to completely reset it but you can put that to whatever it gives you as the option it's not going to change the build but when it comes to the attributes, you're going to end up with 16, 28, 34, and 20. Now, the thing about this build, if you remember it, the build that I finally, or the video that I finally put this in, it actually gets more badges than the 6'3", 
and it does everything that the 653 can and more. The only thing that the 653 has on this build is the fact that it has all contact dunks. It doesn't just have the small and the pro like this one, it has all of them. This is a build that pretty much combines the 653 and my 511. Where I say the 511 is the easiest one in the game, but the 653 is the most fun. But if you want something right there in the middle that's just as fast as the 653, or at the 511 but it can shoot way better than a six foot three this is going to be that build right there in the middle now one thing about the badges before we get too far into this video the badges you can get more badges depending on the rebirth you're gonna get more like four for the rebirth and it depending on how many times you hit level 40 you're gonna get those extra badges as well on the build so you can go crazy with the badges i'm gonna be real we in season six so you do the math you get five seasons of plus four if you hit level 40 every single season you can get pretty much that many more badges plus rebirth so yeah when it comes to the build though this is what it's looking like before all that so you can have an 86 driving dunk with an 85 vertical strictly to be able to have all the content dunks you have a, you have to have an 86 and an 85 to be able to have the small and you have to have an 84 and an 80 just to be able to have the pro so we have both of those requirements reached when it comes to the layup, that's at a 70 strictly, so we can be at least able to get the long athlete. 47 close shot is strictly based off the mid range and three pointer. Three pointers up to a 92, that's allowing you to get badges like Circus 3's Hall of Fame that you wouldn't be able to get on the on the six foot three. Badges like catch and shoot that you wouldn't be able to get on the six foot three. Badges like I don't even know, bro. A lot of these you are able to get like sniper. Um, you're not able to get set shooter. You're not able to get um, badges like. I guess you're able to get pretty much all this other stuff. Corner specialist, dead eye. You're able to get all this other stuff, at least gold or Hall of Fame. It's just the subtle difference of the catch and shoot or circuit street. So if that doesn't make a difference for you, okay, I understand. But the fact that you're reaching that 90 plus threshold is a big difference. Because the other one's at an 88 three pointer. You're at a 92. So you're in that 90 plus threshold. You got to understand that's great. 80 plus is good. 88 is right there. It's as close as great as you're going to be able to get. But that great is just a whole different level of easy, of able to shoot. It's that simple. But free throw is a 95. And I'm going to be real with you. If you can't shoot with an 88, I don't know what to tell you. Just make this. It's going to be a lot easier. But it's not going to be as easy as the, the little 511 one that's like a 99. So it's really a pick your poison. If you want it to be easier, I would say still go with the 511. But if you want something to be as fa fun as possible and still be able to shoot easier than the 63, just go with this. When it comes to the pass accuracy, that's at an 86. So you lower it, it's going to be at 33. That's why we had an 86, so we can get 34. But the ball handle, look at the badge that you're getting based off the ball handle. You're getting Quick Chain Hall of Fame. You're getting Hyper Dream Hall of Fame. Or Hyper Drive, not Hyper Dream. Uh, handles for Days Hall of Fame. Stop and Go Hall of Fame. You're getting a lot of these badges Hall of Fame. You're not able to get those badges Hall of Fame. Now, Stop and Go, you're able to get, but badges like Quick Chain, Handles for Days, Hyper Drive, you're not getting. You get a 90 ball handle on the 6 for 3. When it comes to the speed of ball, you're able to get quick for step, just like you would on the other one, Hall of Fame. So all that is pretty much the same. But the only thing is, unpluggable, still not able to get that beyond gold. And that's on all three of them, whether you're the 5'11", the 6 for 1, or even the 6 for 3. Now, when it comes to the defense, now, you might say the defense is going to be worse. Actually, it's better. To be real with you, the defense is better because you have the same primitive defense that I always go with. You have the same steal that I always go with. Now, the thing about the... um. The 511, the defense might actually be better because of the fact that the steel is higher, but you do have a lower printed defense, so I would argue it's not, and you're shorter, so I would argue it's not. But this one, you could argue is better because you have the same printed defense, the same steel. You have a little bit higher even on block, so you could argue it. I wouldn't argue that because six foot three, you're not only taller, but the six foot three also has a six foot nine wingspan because you're trying to get that driving dunk up to a 92, which results in having you a longer wingspan also on defense. So I would say that this build getting more badges, having pretty much the same attributes you can keep up, but I don't know if it's as good as the six foot three. That's what I'll say. When it comes to the physicals though, y'all know what I'll say all the time on speed. Speed is really important in this game, but it's not as important as you think. Speed is really more important for bigs. You want to get that as high as possible to keep up with guards. But as a guard with the balling ends at all times, you really want to mainly focus on ball handles, speed ball, acceleration, quick first step. That's the stuff you want to worry about. Speed is going to be really dealing with when you're off ball. If you're a person that decks a lot, okay, yeah, you need speed. But me, I don't even need my speed pass at 80 to be real with you because I had a ball in my hands at all times. So speed ball, I need that. Acceleration, I need that. Ball handle, I need that. 
speed not so much so i just put that up as much as i possibly can but i don't stress over it. i just try to get as much as other stuff as i possibly can and put that up last and i actually was able to still get that up to an 86 you could get this to a 95 you could get it to the 90 plus threshold but i didn't care to do that and it makes no difference for me personally but that's up to you when it comes to the acceleration though we got that max 94 that's just of the utmost importance again that's how fast you're gonna be able to dribble so how fast you're gonna get up to your max speed whether you're with the ball or without the ball so that's gonna affect your speed of ball but not only your speed of ball but your speed as well so if you go high speed and don't raise the acceleration that's an l strength is not touch it's a guard now i'm gonna rebuild when it comes to strength it does help you blow by people and stuff like that but i don't really need that i can go by people regardless because people just can't guard me when it comes to the vertical, that's up to an 85. We went over that already. Now, that does also help your block with a 59. So, if you really do care about that for your chase downs and stuff like that, that's going to be a big help. I'm going to be real. But we really only did that for the driving dunk to be able to have those packages and stuff like that. Stamina that's at a 99. It's a guard build. It's kind of idle that you really want to do stuff like that. Now, when it comes to the takeovers, you have really, really good options for guards. You got the shot creator options, which are arguably the most broken ones. Limitless range, which y'all know I go with every single time, and a playmaker takeover. Now, it's a couple of different ways you can go about this. Now, say for instance, you're a person that goes for dual takeover every single time. Dual takeover is not how it was last year where like, once you have dual takeover, you'll have pretty much that whole time and then like one take will run out but you'll still have the main one this year it's pretty much going to be dual takeover where to the fact that like you're going to have both takeovers for the entire time of the dual takeover so you can go with like a ankle breaking shots with a limitless range as the back end because i'm gonna always go with back end if i'm going for dual takeover all the time or i'm going with like a pull up precision or i'm going with a negative impact anything like that but i'll probably go with more of an ankle breaking shots because that fit more of my play style T try to take ankles and shoot off that or, but if you're a shot creator and really want to do pull up precision, you can do that. If you wanted to go with negative impact, which is probably the most broken one, if they had something like this for like standstill shooting, it probably would be the most broken one in the game, but they don't for really obvious reasons because more people do that. But yeah, that's probably what you could do. But me personally, I go for just one take of a large percent of the time because it's quicker to get. And you can still get those plus eights on the back end when you just have one take for unlocked. So when I do that, I go with a team bash boost now i wasn't supposed to show you this but you're actually as well able to get a lockdown takeover on this build so if you want to go with a lockdown take for your plus eights you can do that as well so that makes the options a lot better than you would have on the 511 so when you're on a six for three you get slasher sharp playmaker and lock when you're on the 511 you only get shot creator sharp and playmaker the difference between all three i guess the only one if you wanted slasher you would only be able to get that on the six for three but all in all options are still really good you have either playmaker and lock for the secondary takeover if you want those plus eights and if you want to go with dual takeover you can do that as well on this build just as easy so yeah i would probably go with a team badge boost or go with a lot take it really doesn't matter on the lot take it's either extreme amps or enhanced jump shot contest probably enhanced jump shot contest on this build because it's so short but yeah i'm gonna go with team badge boost and the build comes out as the best Build in the game, in my opinion, at this point, two way three point playmaker. It just combines too many things into one build while still having the dominance of everything that you can do in one build. You can shoot on it, you can get contact dunks on it, you can play defense on it, and you can dribble to the highest potential on this game. Now, you don't have unpluggable all the thing, but that's really the only hole of the entire build. You can't really tell me anything else that's wrong. So, yeah, that's pretty much the build. All we got left to do is get y'all the best the finishing badges in the game so let's do that all right so hopping into the best finishing badges in the game so i'm gonna do this a little bit different now i've already give you guys pretty much the best badge setup gave you guys the order the importance the bigs the guards all that so the way we're gonna be doing this today we're gonna be giving you guys a top five with honorable mentions the badges i put to bronze are gonna be honorable mentions the badge i put the hall of fame are going to be top five and there's a lot of badges you could put as a guard or a big but i'm gonna try to combine all this in one just to give y'all the simplest way of doing it so when it comes to the badges i'm gonna start this off with honorable mentions all right so let's hop straight into it so when it comes to the honorable mentions i'm gonna have a multiple it's not just gonna be like two three it's just gonna be a couple so first one i'm gonna go unstrippable now, Unstrippable is an honorable mention strictly because of the fact that, like, a lot of people don't really know how good of a badge this is. Now, yes, it's really for, like, when people are trying to use ball stripper, but the real thing that I like it for 
is when you want to do euros, you want to do spin layups, or even spin dunks, stuff like that, hop step stuff like that in the paint, this is going to make you get stripped less. So you know how sometimes when you do a spin layup, you'll just lose the ball. Nobody's even reaching, they just bump it to you and you lose the ball. A strip will kind of negates that type of stuff. Now the higher it goes, the less that will happen. And, it, and when you go past like silver and stuff like that, or even just put it to silver, you pretty much will never see it ever really happen unless somebody spam it X on. The bumps will really not even work no more. Now bronze, it'll negate it sometimes, but it'll still you'll still see it and stuff like that. So in my opinion, unstrippable, if you combine this with other badges, then I'm gonna actually show you guys like another honorable mention like Acrobat. It can really be very overpowered. We know what acrobat is for. It's been in the game for years. It's pretty much just anytime you do an acrobatic layup. When you do a hop step layup, a euro layup, um, spin layup, it's going to go in a lot more in the game. Now, one reason why I like it, honestly, say for instance, you want to go for a contact dunk, but you're getting a bad innovation. It's kind of like a bailout. What you can do is double clutch that. And it'll actually really be good for negating people when they try to block you. So you could argue it could be top five, but me personally, I don't know if I can go that far. But it is really good. Now, one thing that it's really good for double clutches for is because when it comes to double clutches, it'll give you an auto contest. When you can be wide open and accidentally double clutch, you'll be wide open, but it'll give you like a really high contest when you double clutch on accident. But when you put Acrobat on, it'll negate that. And that's it, that's because you have to have Acrobat on to do double clutches and make those. It's literally in the game for you to miss that if you don't have Acrobat on. So yeah, Acrobat is another great badge that you can throw on. Now we're gonna move a little bit more into like the big men badges. I would say Fast Twitch. Fast Twitch is a badge that's pretty much gonna speed up your standing lips or standing dunks. Now, the real reason why, only reason it's really not top five because in my opinion, you could, if it was really actually a good badge, it could be top five because of the fact it speeds it up. It just doesn't do as big of a difference. I do think it does a difference to the fact that you wanna put it on because I tell you all the time, speed kills, but it doesn't do as big of a difference where it's not like overpowering anything. It's just good, you know what I'm saying? And it doesn't really, you know what I'm saying, break the game or anything. But yeah, it is good. When it comes to another badge, honestly, I don't know if I wanna put these on here, but I'm gonna put them drop stepper. I'm gonna go ahead and group all these together. Drop stepper, uh, where's the other one? Back down punisher, all the post score badges. Now these are auto. Now when you go against post score, you understand what you're gonna be dealing with. A lot of backing you down, a lot of post hooks, a lot of, you know what I'm saying, face. So let me go ahead and throw hook specialist on here as well. Hook specialist might be the most broken badge in the entire game, but like, come on now. That's not, that damn near not even because of the badge. That's just a broken, like, thing that you can do. But yeah, when it comes to any of this post scoring stuff, it's very good. Now, one thing about the post scoring badge that I really want to shine a light on is Dream Shake. Dream Shake is just a great badge. And from the aspect of, you can literally do this and you get a, people jumping with Pogo Stick and it'll get you a foul a large percent of the time. So it can either bail out your team and late in the shot clock or it can just get you free free throws. It's really good. So if you really want to use a badge to pretty much negate Pogo Stick, Dream Shake would be your badge. Now, I have some more um, other ones. So I'm going to take all these post scoring badges off real quick. Next one I'm going to actually end up going with is Put Back Boss. This is a very important badge for big man when it comes to the fact that when you get a rebound, it's going to make you dunk a lot more in those situations. When you get a rebound, it's going to make you make that shot more in those situations if you go right back up. But also, just like pretty much with like chase down artists, this unlocks the ability to do put back dunks. Whereas, you get that, you go up for a rebound and you dunk it like all in one motion. You don't have to come back down to the ground. You can go right back up all in one motion. That You have to have put that boss on to do that stuff. Simple. So yeah, uh, I was kind of mixing up my words, but yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, next badge, y'all always get on me for not really putting that on here, and I'm putting it today. Fearless Finisher, this improves the ability to convert layups, but also reduces the amount of energy lost from contact layups. So pretty much Relentless Finisher, but only for layups, but also it's Contact Finisher, but only for layups. All in one badge. I don't know why we don't have like a Relentless Finisher for like contact dunks. They should have put that in Posterizer. They didn't. But it is what it is. Next badge, um, I, I would probably say like a teardropper, but that's really for like the smallest people. So it's not really that crazy or anything. You don't even really need it. It just makes teardrops a lot easier and stuff like that. Kind of similar to how Agrabash makes a lot of stuff that's in the game already a lot easier. So I guess I'll throw it. But like, you know what it does. It literally says what it does. It's for floaters, teardrops, all that stuff. But last but not least, 
Lob City Finisher. You probably didn't expect this to be an honorable mention, but yes, Lob City Finisher is an honorable mention. One of the best bronze badges in the entire game. Improves the chances of completing a successful alley-oop. Now, what I actually was going to do, I was going to put five badges that you could use on pretty much any build. But I didn't go ahead and do that. I actually just wanted to give y'all the five best finish badges that are in my opinion. So, we're going to put Lob City Finisher in the honorable mention. This was the closest out of all these honorable mentions to make it in the top five. Another one that you could say is Mouse in the House, very overpowered for bigger people, whether you're a bigger guard, a bigger big, a bigger lock, whatever it is, it's a good badge. Now, when it comes to the top five badges, I'm going to go in order. First badge is Giant Slayer. Now, yes, it's really for short people against taller people, but the main reason why I always tell y'all this badge is so good is because it reduces the possibility of being blocked. With that being said, it reducing the possibility of being blocked that is going to be negating a very broken badge in this game, Rim Protector. And Rim Protector gets you really good block animations and it makes you block shots at a way higher percentage. Giant Slayer is here to negate that. And Giant, Rim Protector is so broken that I would argue at this point, you could argue it's the best defensive badge. It's up there with badges like Chase Down Artist, up there with badges like Pickpocket, Interceptor, and stuff like that. I would probably say Chaz Down Artist probably is the best because you can go so crazy even with it at just bronze. But yeah, Giant Slayer definitely negating one of, if not top two, top three defensive badges in the entire game. Next badge I would go with is Rise Up. Rise Up is just so good for bigs. If you're a big like me that only want to dunk every single time this is the badge you need to be having on at all times this is going to be making it it literally says makes it easier to dunk when under the basket increases the likelihood of dunking the ball when standing in the painted area this pretty much is going to make you do standing dunks a hundred percent of the time and when i say a hundred percent of the time a hundred percent of the time now it's ridiculous how big of a difference rise up makes for whenever you're trying to just do standing dunks but you're going to do a lot more standing dunks with this on than without so um, I would say out of all the finishing badges in totality of what this badge does and for what it does, the how good it is at what it does, it might be the best badge for what it does because it makes the biggest difference probably. But there are just some other more important badges for me. That's why it's at four. And I think there's just more important things than just standing up because I don't feel like standing up is just a universal thing. Now for big man, this could you could say it's the best badge in the game. And that's really not really something I could argue. But in totality of all finishing badges, I would just put it at four. Now next, I would have to go slowly finisher here at three. Now if we just talking current gen, I would say this is the best badge. But if we talk both current gen and next gen, with next gen not needing current slowly finisher on every build, especially if you're going for a lot of contact dunks, you don't really need it because of the dunk meter. But slowly finisher is still that badge that gets you the best animation possible for every single situation possible. So that can go along hand in hand with certain layer packages such as Circus, Kyrie Irving, very broken with those. And when you go, go along with the fact that it also ups your dunk frequency, bro, it becomes this broken, broken badge. But it's just not as necessary on next gen, so I can't put it at one or even two because these other two badges are just so important for both current gen, for both next gen. So I have to put those up there. It's that simple. Next badge I'm going to actually end up going with is Limitless Takeoff. Limitless Takeoff favors dunks and layups from a further takeoff range. When attacking the basket, a player with this badge will start their dunk or layup gathered from farther out than others. This pretty much will allow you to dunk from farther. Y'all know I don't do this stuff for layups, so y'all understand the, what I was doing this for. I'm doing this for dunks. So this is going to help you pretty much dunk from further out. So this can be contact dunks. This can be driving dunks. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to help you dunk them further out. And this can go along with layups if you want to do it for layups, but I'm doing it strictly for layups. And this could help you. This, in my opinion, helps you get more confidence on current gen and next gen. This is a universal badge. This is probably the best universal badge in the game at this point. So, yeah, for finishing. But it just doesn't have the importance of this badge. Posterizing. Improves the likelihood of posterizing your opponent. Increases the chance of throwing down a dunk on your defender. Now, posterizer isn't just good by itself anymore. You really do need these other badges. So these other badges are close. But on current gen, where it's so much harder and more difficult to get content dunks, to trigger content dunks than it is on next gen. 
where you have the dunk meter. But if you get good with it, you put the right badges on it, you can get a really good frequency with your dunk, with your posterizer. It's just not going to be as frequent as last year, but you can get it up. You definitely can. So yeah, posterizer, in my opinion, still is the best finishing badge in the game when it comes to having the driving dunks or content dunks that's gonna be like 20% every single tier of posterizer is gonna be 15% on top of that now that's how it used to be now I feel like since it kind of went down this year the frequency they probably lowered it probably 5% every single tier but like for 15% with the 20 that's gonna be 35% for bronze 50% at silver 65% at gold and 80% at hall of fame but like I said if that's 5% lower that's gonna be five percent lower for every single tier so that's gonna be from 80 percent down to 60 at hall of fame so you gotta do stuff like that but also with that being said that doesn't say what your driving dunk rating is that doesn't say whether your takeover is activated all that good stuff and that doesn't even say if you have slash your takeover so that's gonna be doing a lot more stuff so you gotta keep that in mind as well but yeah that in my opinion is the best finishing badges in the game i gave you guys a lot of honorable mention just to make sure i cover all facets of the game there are even some i probably left out like grace under pressure but at that point i would have give you guys literally every badge in the game but yeah that's going to be the end of this video um what i also could do i could give you guys the badge tier list again i could do that i thought about doing that but y'all gotta let me know if y'all want that y'all seem to really enjoy these top fives or bad setups and stuff like that so i'm trying to give you guys these all in the same video of like these build videos so i don't waste too many videos I'm trying to put more in one because y'all seem to enjoy that but yeah that's gonna be the end of this video like the video if you enjoy subscribe if you're new turn on notifications be the first to ever see my video share the video to anybody and i mean anybody you think it would help but yeah man it's your boy fist man and i have to be man tell him to bring me my money yeah!